What's up guys, I'm the Pop Rocker, back with another video. So in the year now that I've had this channel, I've talked about movies, I've talked about music, I've talked about television, and of course, gaming. But the one other love that I've never really talked about is wrestling. Yes, sports entertainment professional wrestling. And with this week giving us the greatest event in wrestling history, I wanted to share my yearly Rumble fantasy booking with all of you. So I am. No, <laughs> look, I promise that's not going to be a normal thing. I just wanted to do it one more time. Before I really get into it, I've got some personal ground rules that I need to make known for everybody here. Rule number one or not really so much a rule as a guideline or thing I've changed, my rumbles have 35 entrants in them rather than 30. Yes, I know 30 is like the gold standard, but last year I realized that WWE has so many people on their roster that aren't getting utilized in this rumble when they easily could. I mean, we get what, maybe two people from NXT and you've still got to shoehorn in some legends and some surprises and returns and all of that. Rule number two, up until the day that I complete my booking, I have to include anybody that the WWE has included in their rumble. And I have to take out anybody. What are you doing? All of their storylines have to be considered canon. I have to take all of that kind of into consideration. And in this case, that booking was completed January 22nd, just minutes before. Can you stop? It's gonna look real stupid if this doesn't come in later. Hello? Is it the cord? All right, where was I? January 22nd, 2021, before SmackDown, so nobody stupid like Dolph Ziggler gets included in my Rumble. Which brings me to rule number three. No champions in my Rumble, unless they've already been included by WWE. I just feel like anyone who already is a champion shouldn't be fighting for the chance to fight for a different championship. I know it's a whole thing. It can be interesting, all of that. It's just easier for me to not do it. So I don't. This year though, I added an amendum to that. Am amend, um, add in, addendum, amend. I changed it a little bit so that any champions that I want in my rumble forfeit their championship before they enter the rumble. Anyway, here's my 2021 Royal Rumble. Now, before we even get started in the match, there's a few things that I need to go over that happen earlier in the night. First of all, the night starts with a kind of ceremony, I guess. I don't really want to say ceremony. It's a backstage thing. Any champions who want to give up their belts and enter the Rumble do so. Big E comes up with Paul Heyman beside him because he's a Heyman guy and has been for a few weeks ever since the Talking Smack stuff, and he gives up the Intercontinental belt. He doesn't seem very happy about it, but Heyman talks him into it, tells him, you know, this is your chance. Go for the gold. Go get Drew's belt. All of that. Uh, so he draws his number and he's not very happy about it. Then the Hurt Business comes up. Bobby Lashley readily gives up his belt. He is also going to be in the Rumble. MVP's like, you know, this is it. This is the time for the Hurt Business. You can do this. We all got you. Cedric and Shelton start to turn in their belts. He stops them. He says, look, we can't all be doing this. Can't put all our eggs in one basket. You guys just got the tag belts. Keep doing it. Keep being great. And I mean, they're, I guess, a little hesitant, but um, they get it. They understand the Hurt Business is a family. They work together. They've had their little issues in the middle, but it's not going to stop them. But Bobby Lashley gives up the U.S. title. He's ready. He's focused. He's in the match. Also, I guess it's going to be kind of a minor spoiler, but um, Otis gets the 24-7 belt from R-Truth. And then um, right before the match, R-Truth gets it back. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, if anyone asks, uh, Kevin Owens didn't have a title match earlier because it was stupid. He shouldn't, shouldn't be in it. Stupid idea. Bad creative. They should have kept Adam Pearce. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Kevin Owens is in this and he's not hurt. He didn't have a match. Um, so we start off at number one with Sami Zayn. He comes off with his signs, everything, talking about his conspiracy, which is continuing because he was given the number one spot in the Rumble match. He thinks that was intentional to keep him down. While he's blabbering on, Jeff Hardy comes out as number two. Uh, they kind of start fighting in the ring a little bit, but Sammy does the whole like, ooh, I gotta, you know, I gotta check myself. I'm in the corner. I don't want to fight the cowardly thing. They don't really get to fight too much until AJ Styles comes out at number three. Remember when they had like one of the greatest matches of the year last year? Yeah, that was a coincidence. I just picked some people to be first and it was them. But they start fighting. Omos is there. 
they've had a little bit of tension the past few weeks. Not a lot, not like they're going to fight or anything, but almost just, he's kind of getting a little sick of being this short, egotistical dude's bodyguard. Maybe that'll come up later, maybe it won't. Ooh. So all three of them are going at it. They never fully, like according to us, their beef was finished, but according to WWE, uh, that feud still had miles to go. So they, they're they all still fighting. And number four is Leon Ruff from NXT. He sneaks on in there and just hides in a corner, lets the three of them do their thing. Um, next out is Adam Cole, two NXT people in a row. He gets in, he sees Styles is kind of like working to get Hardy eliminated, and he helps him. Jeff Hardy is the first man eliminated, because of course he should be. He doesn't really have anything to jump off of. What else is he going to do? So then Adam Cole and Styles kind of do the, oh, it's you, and they kind of get in the ring and start to like fight, because that's one of those matches that like a lot of us probably want to see, because they're like two good wrestlers in the company. Um, while they're doing that, Sami Zayn sneaks over to the corner that Leon Ruff's in, and they kind of just chill and watch what's happening. They both they both are smart enough to know not to go messing with these people. You stay down, you stay alive. While that's happening, Rey Mysterio's music hits. But when he comes out, he has given Dominic his spot, and Dominic is in there. Because now we're going to start the uh, passing of the torch that should have happened last summer, because it's, t it's time. Bray, it's time. So Dominic gets in the ring. He's he's like really cocky. He's, you know, debuted at SummerSlam. He's Rey Mysterio's son. He thinks he can do whatever he wants. Next out, Braun Strowman. Strowman sees Sami Zayn and Leon Ruff hiding in the corner and goes straight for them. Ruff like moves away. He's he's not like running per se from Strowman, but he's, you know, being smart about it. He's gonna try to fight. Uh Sami Zayn, on the other hand, just gets out of the ring goes behind commentary to hide he's he's gonna be that guy in this match so while leon ruff's doing his best to try to survive braun Strowman, dominic being cocky goes and gets involved and starts hitting Strowman. they start fighting next out king corbin with uh maybe his little cronies i don't know if that's like a permanent thing or not it doesn't it doesn't matter no one gets eliminated otis comes out next still nobody eliminated there's i think seven people in the ring now it's stacking up and then a gong rings Everyone stops. Everyone looks up at the ring. Some people are scared. Some people are confused. No one has any like happy look on their face. Out comes Alistair Black. He's in a hat, in a trench coat, his own thing. He's got an urn that's, you know, stylized like Undertaker, purple and black and blocky, you know, that kind of thing. He is now the mortician. I feel like that character, the Undertaker, the mystique that he had, that's a good thing to kind of keep in WWE. Some people might disagree. I don't think it's like necessary, but it's cool. So Aleister Black is the mortician now. Some of you might say Aleister Black isn't really on Undertaker's level. Shouldn't really be the one doing that. Neither was Undertaker when he debuted. So it's going to take some time, but he's going to get there. Anyway, he gets in the ring, shows his dominance, immediately kicks Corbin over the ropes. He's gone. Like I said, didn't matter. After that, there's some fighting going on. AJ Styles almost gets eliminated, but he yells for almost to save him and he does. A little bit reluctant he's not like you know it, he, he doesn't really like being beckoned by styles to like be his servant but it's whatever and also braun Strowman eliminates adam cole next out is randy orton he kind of gives mortician a little chuckle when he walks past like oh we're you know doing this because he's that guy um nothing else really happens otis at one point he's about to eliminate leon ruff and our truth comes out with the 24 7 title not a uh, competitor. He's not entering the match. He just comes out, gets in the ring, rolls up Otis. There aren't any refs there, so uh, he keeps yelling. Leon Ruff gets in, does the three count just to get our truth to shut up. Our truth gets up, takes his title, heads back to the back. He thinks he's won the 24/7 title that was his the whole time. Actually, I think there's some refs outside of the ring usually at the Rumble, but we'll just pretend there's not. It doesn't matter. They're not part of. Next it. out, John Cena. Now, when he comes out, he's a little bit more serious. You know, he's got, a, I guess, maybe some darker hair, something. He escaped from the hellscape that was the Firefly Funhouse match. He's not, that doesn't really get brought up here, but it's going to. But the point is, uh, he's he's a changed man. In the ring, everyone's reaction, people like Styles and Strowman, kind of the bad guys, they get up, uh, they're ready to fight. They're like looking at him and then they get attacked from behind by Dominic and Leon Ruff. I'm kind of am already losing who's in the match. It basically starts a big brawl before Cena's even in there. Cena finally gets into the ring, and as soon as he does, 
cocky little Dominic shows up and knocks him out. John Cena's gone. This is gonna start Cena's mania story, a kind of poor me, do I even belong in this business anymore? Because only John Cena would take getting eliminated that personally. Uh, it's gonna happen with Dominic, you know, they're gonna feud leading up to it. He's gonna put the kid over, kinda teach him some respect, uh, loyalty and hustle. Actually, the three lessons that he needs to learn. That was a coincidence too. I didn't even mean to do that. Anyway, the point is, you know, Dominic's like celebrating like, ooh, I just eliminated John Cena. I'm Rey Mysterio's son. And while that's happening, Sami Zayn sneaks back into the ring, eliminates him, and gets back out. So Dominic's gone. Next out at number 12, I think, yeah, Big E. You know, kind of an early start for someone like him. Nothing really happens, people start fighting. Then comes Bray Wyatt. Not the Fiend, Funhouse Bray Wyatt. He's coming to the ring. Orton kind of stops what he's doing. He's a little concerned, obviously. He's like, I thought I burned this dude alive a month ago. Uh, so Orton's getting ready to fight him. He's in the middle. Wyatt gets in, just goes right past Orton. Doesn't even look at him. Doesn't notice him. So Wyatt doesn't remember the Fiend. The Fiend is gone. He has no memory of being the Fiend. He has no memory of what he did as the Fiend. He's just Funhouse Bray now. This kind of confuses Orton even more. Like, he's almost like kind of offended, I guess, maybe. So Bray Wyatt's like in the corner hitting somebody. He grabs him, pulls him around. He's like, yo, it's Wyatt, it's Orton. I mean, maybe not so like odd couple-ish. Wyatt kind of like, you know, squares up a little bit, maybe. And then he gives Orton a big old hug because he thinks that they're like friends now. Next competitor out, Trey Miguel, formerly of the Rascals. Is he repping MSK? I don't know, probably. I haven't really gotten that far. But he's in the match now. Surprise! He feels like he's got something to prove in the company because he's coming from outside. He goes right for Strowman, starts getting in a fight with him. Now it's Kevin Owens who, remember, did not get brutally beaten by Roman Reigns in a last man standing match, so he's not like limping or anything. He can fight. He gets in the ring, he sees Styles is like on the ropes. I guess maybe Mortician or someone has him up there. He helps toss him over and eliminate him. But almost catches. Styles, little, you know, a uh, baby man carry. Um, Styles is like, hey, you know, get me, get me back in there. Let's go. Almost kind of gives a look like he's going to drop him, but I guess thinks twice about it, puts him on the apron, rolls him back in the ring. Styles is still in the match. Now the Miz comes out. He basically comes, gets in the ring, goes across and tries to roll right back out and get in commentary just because it's funnier if he does that than go around. But he gets there. And Sami Zayn's there. Sami Zayn shoes him off and makes him get back in the ring. While he's fighting, it's a lot of people fighting at this point. Sami Zayn gets back in, eliminates Trey Miguel. Hello? Like, there we go. So he kind of does the whole like, oh yeah, I'm great. I think that's like two eliminations for him now. And then he gets back out under the ring and runs behind the commentary table. But Kevin Owens sees him this time. He kind of, you know, gets behind the table. He looks back. He sees Owens just sitting there on the rope staring at him. He's like, you know, bro, keep it down. Like, don't, don't wrap me out. Owens is like, yeah, okay, cool. Turns around, taps Braun Strowman on the shoulder. He's like, yo, Sammy's behind the commentary table. I guess Strowman's mad about that. I don't know why he would care, but uh, he gets out, goes after Sammy, grabs him, throws him back in the ring. So Sammy gets in, gives Owens kind of that like, thanks, thanks a lot, guy. You know that look. And Owens winks at him and then rushes Strowman on the ropes. Sammy gets the idea real quick, runs over to, they eliminate Braun Strowman. Owens just kind of like looks at Sammy with like, you know, man up, bro. And uh, they kind of start fighting together. Sammy stays in the ring. Next up is Bo Dallas. Did you know he's still around? I didn't. So he gets, he gets in the ring and Wyatt comes up, recognizes him, because like the brother thing, all of that, tries to give him a hug. Bo Dallas slaps him in the face. Do you remember that one day when Bo Dallas, like, was, he, he was gonna go fight someone in Japan or something? So they made him, like, a heel and he was, like, kind of cool. He had, like, the green, like, uh, the green jumpsuit kind of thing on. We're getting that Bo Dallas again. He's gonna be, like, cool and mean and, like, do something. Anyway, Wyatt slapped in the face, you know. Uh, he almost kind of looks like he's, he's got, like, that little bit of, like, dark look holding his face. And then he just gets real sad. The clock starts counting down and the next entrance is almost. Styles kind of like turns and sees the screen. He stops what he's doing and just turns and looks at almost like confused, angry, probably. I don't, a lot of people are angry. Turns and looks at him and almost just smiles at him. He's been waiting for this. Almost gets in the ring, picks up Styles. And you remember last year when uh, Drew threw Ricochet like 
forever. That's nothing. Uh, almost throw Styles at least over the barricade. Gone. Out of the stadium. And now almost is going to start his singles push because in kayfabe, this pairing with Styles, all it does for him is make him look strong and he can do that anyway. Maybe some people might say he's still a little bit green. Maybe he shouldn't have a singles run yet. This is my fantasy world and in my fantasy world, it's completely fine if he starts fighting. Plus, just imagine the match at Mania where Styles tries a phenomenal forearm and gets swatted out of the ring. Now everyone is nervous because it's a bunch of mostly small dudes Biggie and almost to further that thought. Uh, so Bo Dallas was fighting with Styles. He starts laughing when Styles gets thrown out. He's like, haha, now you're gone. I'm not. Almost eliminates him next. He's gone. Then almost starts on a tear. Takes out Miz, takes out Otis, takes out Bray Wyatt. All in a row. That's five people right off the bat. He's going for Leon Ruff because of course he is. But when Wyatt hits the ground, the lights go out like Fiend style. Lights are down. Everyone's like, oh, the Fiend. Alexa Bliss appears on the top of the ramp because Alexa Bliss is the Fiend now. The Fiend came out of Bray Wyatt's body when he burned alive, whatever happened there. Now it possesses Alexa Bliss. Everyone is scared. Wyatt is most scared because as far as he's concerned, this is the first time he's ever seen the Fiend. He doesn't know what's going on. And Alexa kind of like beckons him with a little like, let's go. They're kind of switching places. His Funhouse Bray, he's going to be like Alexa's a uh, side side person now you know Xavier Woods comes out next and he kind of runs out of the back because the fiend was going in and he's terrified of Bray Wyatt already so that's it it's just a comedy thing he gets in the ring he tries to start kind of teaming up with Big E and Big E's not like against it but he's kind of like you know I'm kind of like doing my own thing like I'm taking this seriously it's not really like the dancing around kind of thing anymore and uh, I feel like you thought almost his run was over it's not he takes out Kevin Owens, takes out Sami Zayn. Seven people in the span of maybe two minutes, three minutes. I don't know how long the Fiend thing takes, but. So they hit the ground, they're upset, everyone always is. But Sami's like starting to throw a tantrum, starting to be Sami Zayn about it. Kevin Owens offers his hand to him, helps him up, kind of calms him down a little bit. They're gonna renew their partnership. Thing is, nobody's switching sides. Heal Sami, face Kevin as a team. Trust me, it's it's gonna be better than it sounds. All right, next out is Bobby Lashley. Now Lashley is gonna help even out the whole almost situation. The way this kind of paces out, almost is just on a rampage the whole time. It's it's basically like he's unstoppable. So Lashley gets in, and you're like, oh, maybe they can do something about almost. He gets in, they kind of have a face to face. While they're doing that, everyone starts going in on almost. Remember um, Infinity War? is the one where they all start fighting Thanos and there's like five of them they're all doing their own moves hitting them from all over the place that's what they all do to Omos it's a big kind of moment that ends with Mortician kicking Omos against the ropes and Big E eliminating him and this is Big E's first elimination ever in the Rumble it's a big deal it's Omos so while Big E's kind of having his moment of like who okay Omos is gone I eliminated him did that I'm taking this seriously Lashley comes up they're gonna have kind of like I don't want to say they're going to have like a friendly competition because it's not really friendly, but um, they're going to have kind of a competition throughout the thing. They've kind of had similar past. They both started giving up their titles. They're both like the big powerhouses in right now. They mirror each other. They reflect each other. Okay, so then Cesaro comes out. Kyle O'Reilly comes out. Nothing happens in any of that time. There's no eliminations. Uh, we just we just kind of cleared the field a whole lot. We're going to take a little bit of a break from eliminations. Kofi comes out. The new day is completed. Uh, Kofi and Woods keep doing the thing they always do. Big E's a little more kind of doing his own. Th He's not like mean about it or anything, but like they'll be fighting someone. He'll kind of like sneak off and go do his own fighting. Like he's just trying to focus on him. Meanwhile, Randy Orton, remember he's in here. He's fighting the mortician. He gets kicked, hit something. I don't know. He's dazed. And then out of nowhere, creeps up Edge behind him. You know that, you know the shot that they have that's always really cool where someone's doing something and Randy Orton comes like a, like a, like a viper behind him. Edge does that to Orton. He spears him, runs out of the ring, he's gone. Orton doesn't know what hit, literally doesn't know what hit him. Uh, he's down on the ground. Big E, when he's doing one of his little sneakaways, sees this, eliminates Orton. When he kind of sneaks off to do that, New Day's fighting. Woods is in a little bit of trouble, but Big E keeps doing his own thing, eliminates the Mortician too. They're both gone. And then Seth Rollins makes his return. He gets in the ring, climbs on the top rope, 
does his arm. I don't really have room to do my arms. Uh, for the greater good, you know, his thing. And waits to be eliminated. What's going on with this guy? You know, he did this at Survivor Series. He's doing it now. Something weird's going on in his head. Luckily, I don't have to figure out what that is. Even though I have. Anyway, who should be lucky enough to eliminate Seth Rollins? Then little Leon Ruff. He gets his moment, he survived all this time, he celebrates, Big E eliminates him, of course. Now Woods and Kofi, they give Big E a little bit of a look here. It's like, you know, it was kind of a cheap shot, give the kid his moment, but it is the rumble after all. He's gotta go at some point, so it's not a big point of contention. Now we're down to the final 10 entrance. This is where everything's gonna start heating up. Nakamura comes out next. Now, Cesaro is obviously going to gravitate towards him because as much as we suddenly like to pretend they're not, I guess, they're still a tag team. They're still unified. They start fighting New Day. They get Kofi over the ropes. He's on the apron. He's going to get eliminated. Like, Kofi's in a bad way. Woods can't stop him. They're yelling for Big E to help. But then, Heyman from the outside. By the way, I forgot to mention Heyman's out here the whole time. He just doesn't really do anything. Uh, he starts telling Big E, no, you need him gone. So Big E turns away, doesn't help, doesn't look, Kofi gets eliminated. Woods obviously is upset. He goes and gets in Big E's face, starts yelling at him, and Big E for the rest of the match is going to have, you know that face he's really good at where his he just shuts all emotion off. It's nothing. That's, that's the Big E. No more fun Big E. He, he's upset. He doesn't want to show how hurt he is having to betray his friends, but he does. This is this is the real time. This is WrestleMania. It's the Royal Rumble. And speaking of Heyman, who should come out next but Jay Uso, flanked, of course, by Roman Reigns and Apollo Crews. Apollo's, like, trying to get in on the bloodline thing. He's, like, determined. He's ready. And Reigns is letting him. Right? Of course. He's, like, yeah, more backup. Jay Uso's not a big fan of him, though, because he's not part of their fame. He's not related. Reigns goes straight to Heyman and is not happy with Heyman. He's like, uh, just kind of, just kind of intimidating him and kind of like, a, oh, you have more clients. You're trying to, you don't, I'm not good enough for you. Like you've got Big E. You think you and Big E are going to do something? What about me? What, what, what are we doing here? So while that's happening, Jey Uso gets in, makes a big showing, eliminates Kyle O'Reilly. He's gone. He looks down, looks to Reigns for approval. Reigns doesn't even notice. Reigns is caught up in Heyman. He doesn't even see Jey Uso get the elimination. Next in, Apollo Crews. Drew side by side. Probably some shenanigans there, but that's none of our business. He's gung-ho to help Jey Uso. We're a team. We're going to do this. Jey's like, you know, he's an... A lot of people are annoyed at other people in this rumble, I guess. There's some tension there. Nobody gets eliminated yet. Next in... Carry and Cross. We're back to NXT. It feels like every time one NXT guy goes out, another one that maybe, I, or that hasn't happened at all. So Carry and Cross, he goes right after Lashley. You know, big man on campus. I'm ready for a fight. All that stuff. They go brawl, big meaty man, something. Meanwhile, Jey Uso has Nakamura over the ropes. Paulo Cruz has to get in there. Has to help. Causes a kerfuffle. Cesaro's able to get involved bunch of stuff it leads to cesaro getting eliminated and nakamura fighting his way out of trouble away from them the crowd cheers nakamura still in it's great they love it jay uso not so much not as happy about it and then number 30 yes i go to number 35 but number 30 still a big one for a lot of people carlito's music hits but instead of carlito a man in a hooded sweatshirt comes out and places an apple in the middle of the ring with a switchblade in it. Now this is because Jay White is coming to WWE. He's not in the Rumble because Trey Miguel already did that thing for me. I don't need a bunch of other people from other companies getting in the Rumbles. But Jay White is basically leading up to Mania probably. Is going to be dropping these clues. And by clues I mean switchblades in the middle of things. We're going to get a whole like Bullet Club leader thing. He's like kind of delusional. He's trying to help AJ Styles be the best him. And... It's like it's like a fourth wall breaking kind of oh a bullet club. It doesn't matter. It's that's a, a video for another day or something. So now there's more fighting. Other stuff doesn't happen. Uh, nobody else is eliminated. Tommaso Ciampa's out next. Immediately goes for Karrion Cross. He is gung ho for him. He doesn't even care about the Rumble. He wants to fight Cross now. Originally, 
just a, a little side thing. I was gonna have a spot here where he goes for carrying Cross, and then Cross gets the switchblade out of the apple and tries to stab him, and then it's it turns out it's like a prop knife and it's a whole thing. That just seemed a little too corny and weird. I feel like it's better if the apple just disappears from the ring and nobody questions it. If you prefer the one where carrying Cross tries to stab a guy in the middle of the ring, have that one. That's your rumble. It's okay. Anyway, so they're brawling, they're fighting. Jey Uso has been like working in this rumble. He's been putting in some work, trying to prove himself to Reigns, trying to stop getting like beat up by Reigns because it's embarrassing. He's got Big E in trouble. He's going to eliminate Big E. Who shows up again? Apollo Crews, ready to fight. Gets in the way. Woods gets in there. Jay's, Jay's done. He's not having it. Jay eliminates Apollo Crews. He's like, I am better off. If you're not in here, you're getting in my way. Reigns isn't happy about this. Reigns has barely been noticing how much trouble Apollo Crews has been. All he notices is Jey Uso just threw out his partner, and he's not happy with him. They start getting in a little fight over it. In the distraction, Big E eliminates Jey Uso. Obviously, Reigns isn't happy at all. He puts the hurt on Jay. They all go to the back. Meanwhile, in the ring, Big E and Woods are fighting too. I know it's starting to get a little convoluted. It's a lot. Uh, Big E and Woods are fighting. Big E's like, you know, I didn't need your help. I had that. I could have handled it myself. Woods is like, yo, what's our problem here? What's our, I thought we were friends. I thought we were brothers. Um, while they're going at it, Lashley comes over to eliminate him. Woods, still kind of small and agile. He ducks it. Big E gets eliminated. He is mad. He is fuming. He gave up his intercontinental title for this. Heyman talked him into it. Heyman quickly and masterfully Puts the blame on Woods and Kofi. Big E funnels all of his hatred into them. New Day as a three a three man is done. Heyman holds back Big E when he tries to put the hurt on Kofi at ringside. Because he's he's just going to demolish him. And Heyman's like, nope, not now. I know you're mad. Let's go to the back. Let's rethink this. We'll, we'll figure this out another day. Heyman and Big E go to the back. Just in time for Retribution to come out. Ali is the next entrant. He's actually he's the only one actually getting in. He sends all of Retribution out after Kofi because he's mad. He's upset with Kofi. He didn't even want Kofi to be in this. Uh, it's their you know their whole thing. Uh, Kofi Mania was supposed to be Ali Mania. That whole storyline. Meanwhile, he gets in the ring. He's after Woods. Big E sees all this at the top of the ramp. Doesn't care. Just moves on. That's that's the biggest sign that he's done with them. They're both in trouble and he walks away. So they're all doing that. Woods and Ali are going at it. Woods is putting up a fight because he's he's kind of the underdog of the new day. And especially now that one of them's gone, he's got more to prove. He needs his time to shine in the ring. He's not going to get a ton, uh, but he, he holds his own for a little while. They have a little fight. Sheamus comes out, happens. He's there. While, while that's happening, Woods eventually falls to Ali. Uh, probably some retribution shenanigans in there. He gets eliminated. Him and Kofi are hurt. They go to the back. Ollie's ready to take it on. Lashley comes and stares him down. Lashley's like, look, we've we've dealt with you before. I'm done with you. I'm getting you out of here. Retribution climbs on the ring. Uh, it's, what would that be? Five on one? Four on I don't know how many people are in retribution. They're ready to go. Hurt business music hits. They come to back up their guy. Obviously. Why, why wouldn't they? So, Hurt Business takes out Retribution. They're all fighting. It's just Lashley and Ali. Guess who wins that one? Lashley. Ali's eliminated, of course. Ali's not going to... He, he can fight. He can put up his own. But it's he's going to throw him over. And then Daniel Bryan's music hits. So, here's what happens when Bryan gets in. Everyone left is a realistic contender for winning, I guess. All of them could potentially have a good storyline for the title going to Mania. Like, kind of kind of out of kayfabe, really. Like, any one of them could win and it would make sense. So, Brian gets in. In one corner, it's Lashley and Sheamus. In the other corner, it's Tommaso Ciampa carrying Cross. Nakamura's by his side. It's basically three teams of two, and it becomes a brand supremacy thing, really. They're all, you know, kind of looking at each other, some tensions rising, and then Cesaro jumps up. Cesaro's still out there. He never went to the back. Grabs Nakamura, eliminates him. Obviously, that's going to be a thing later. We'll get into that. But now, what do you know? Daniel Bryan's the underdog here. So they start coming in on him. It's Daniel Bryan. He fights his way through, becomes a fight. Everything falls apart. Chopper and Cross aren't going to stay a team. I'm surprised that I had them standing in a corner together for that long. They break down. Lashley and Sheamus. It becomes a huge brawl. And then, number 35, Brock Lesnar. 
Brock Lesnar comes out. Heyman's standing next to him, grinning like someone that grins. I don't know. I don't. I kind of fell apart there. They come down to the ring. Everyone kind of stops. I don't want to say everyone's like scared of this guy. He's kind of lost some of his luster, but it's still like the intention is it's Brock Lesnar. Like it's you don't want to take him lightly. So he gets in the ring. Sheamus is gone. Immediately takes out Sheamus. Because if we're being honest, Sheamus was the least likely competitor out of these guys. So right now it's Brock Lesnar, Daniel Bryan, Karrion Cross, Tommaso Ciampa, and Bobby Lashley. That's your final five because we're not doing a final four. So Lesnar just goes after the closest guy. Tommaso Ciampa is the one next to him. He he starts trying to eliminate him, but Ciampa fights back because it's Ciampa. Karrion Cross. He's kind of an opportunist. He's like Daniel Bryan. That guy's small. He starts fighting him. They're kind of on the other side. In the middle of these two is Bobby Lashley left on his own. And he kind of gets a moment to think to himself, who am I going to help out? Whose side? He wants Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is the one thing for him under a world title. Like He wants to take him on now. So he goes over. He eliminates Cross and Bryan. They're both gone. While he's doing that, Lesnar gets the upper hand on Ciampa because he's bigger. He's Lesnar. Ends up eliminating Ciampa. He's all excited. Who? Ha, huh, I'm Brock Lesnar. Turns around. He's face to face with Bobby Lashley. Final two. It's a stare down for the, it's a Triple H level stare down. They go at it. They fight a good two to three minutes. They have, they have like a real fight just for plot hole's sake. Hurt Business went to the back with Retribution. You know, they fought to the back, did the whole thing. Uh, so they're not there to help. It's just Lashley Lesnar. Brock Lesnar wins the Royal Rumble. Paul Heyman gets a mic, gets into the ring. As I was saying, pause just to you know fill you in on last year a little bit. Paul Heyman was kind of getting in with Lesnar every once in a while and doing like a Sermon on the Mount kind of thing because Lesnar just kept eliminating people. It was kind of like what he really did. He did it at the beginning and then he left and then he came back at the end. Anyway, at the end, he does that. He's like, oh, Lesnar's about to win and he's going to face. And then CM Punk comes out. CM Punk wins. That was last year. We don't need to talk about that right now. Heyman's in there. As I was saying, he announces Lesnar isn't even going to wait. Lesnar has no interest in waiting to declare he's he's getting Drew. He's going after Drew. He's taking Drew out. He's mad. He's on a rampage. To prove it, while he's doing this, Lesnar got out of the ring. He ran to the back. He's going after Drew now. <laughs> he spots him. One of the one of those the hallways that for some reason they all look the same. I guess it's because they're all stadiums. One of those hallways, he spots him. He's starting to go after him. Roman Reigns gets in his way. Stops him. Reigns is not happy. Reigns had the whole thing with Heyman about like, oh, you've got other clients. He He's not happy that someone else is trying to come in and take his thunder and be the new top guy like Lesnar always does. And he's even more upset that Paul Heyman is the one who did it. And that's what we leave you with. So that is my official Royal Rumble 2021 fantasy booking. Let me know what you thought about it. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you have a different winner in mind? Are you as sick as Brock Lesnar as all of us are? Me too, but it's going somewhere. You'll see. Leave a comment down below. Like, share, subscribe. Do all the, the, the YouTube stuff that you're supposed to do. If you want to talk to me about it or wrestling in general, you can find me on any of my socials. Either way, I've been the Pop Rocker, and I'll see you guys in the next video.